What's up guys, Farce Knight here, and good morning. Well, I guess it depends on when you're watching this, but for me, good morning from my fireplace. Nice cup of coffee in my hand. And as you can see from the title of this video, and if you watched A Day in the Life as a Computer Science Student, then you put two and two together, because if you watched that video, you saw this clip. I had an interview about two weeks ago for a Java software developer position, like full time, not an internship or anything like that. So uh, I'm gonna let you guys know how that went later in this video so stay tuned and if you saw that clip i sure hope you scroll down to the comment section of that video because i pinned a comment i made saying this and it the main reason for that is because i i kind of forgot to talk about it in that video it wasn't until i was editing where i realized i didn't talk about the java engineer interview like i kind of promised i would so this is the video about that interview and it's not going to be necessarily what you're looking for because it's, it, it wasn't an interview that had to do with, you know, uh, this technical question, that technical question, all these interview coding interview questions that, you know, you break out the whiteboard for and you've been studying online and that's probably how you stumbled across this video. It wasn't like that. And I'm just here to talk about my experience because I feel like I owe it to you guys. One, because I promised it. Two, because, I mean, we're software developers here and we want to know about each other's experiences, you know, from what you don't see on camera or for what you don't really talk about or don't have the option to talk about with other software developers. So here we go. So before we get into what actually happened in the interview, let's talk about how I got the interview. So it's actually a really weird way that's I didn't apply for the position or anything like that. My teacher of one of the courses I'm taking this semester at university saw my GitHub account because I had to link my GitHub, uh, one of my GitHub repositories to him in order for him to have access to it. And he saw my work. He saw some of the work that I did, iOS development, and I guess he figured that I was, you know, I'm a senior in in a college that teaches us C++ and Java, plus I have this eh, somewhat portfolio, I don't know how impressive it is, I guess to him and to a few others it was impressive, uh, of iOS development applications. And he saw that, he has a friend who works at uh, the company that I went to interview for, and he recommended me for the job because he knew from his friend that there was an opening there for a Java engineer position. And one thing led to another. I was contacted by his friend and we talked, emailed back and forth for like one or two emails. And then I got invited in uh, to interview. And once I got there, I met with the one guy who essentially, not essentially, he is a project manager along with two other Java engineers who I would be working alongside. Both of their names were Chris, funny enough. But uh, as for the interview, it, that's the least interesting part. The interview was actually no technical questions other than what I had on my resume. So I, of course, I gave him my resume after he communicated me. So in those few emails, I gave my resume to the project manager. Of course, we printed them out and had them there for my interview. We just talked about a few of the software platforms or languages that I use, like Jenkins or Docker or GitHub or Git, you know, for version control and all that. And we also talked about, you know, some of the projects. I think I had projects listed on there. Regardless, they asked, you know, some of the typical questions like what was one problem that you ran into in the past that you wish you would have done differently? And the story I actually had was I used to work uh, and sell si uh, vapor abrasive sandblasters, which is like a new technology sandblaster. I went up to Canada and the conditions were horrible. This is a vapor blaster, so if it's freezing conditions, you need to add a special product, which was antifreeze, essentially. You had to add antifreeze in there, and you had to have the right media, which is like the sand that would be in there. And one thing led to another, and the machine didn't perform the way it always does because it was so cold. The blast media, the sand, wasn't what it should have been. It was really bad stuff, low-quality stuff but I didn't have any say in it because they have all union stuff up there. So I was barely allowed to do any of the work except for talk about it, which wasn't very fun from my standpoint. I just kind of went on to talk about how I would have done that a lot differently by setting everything up, like making sure everything was in line exactly the way I needed it, regardless of what anyone else told me. And that's what I did for future visits to everywhere else I needed to demonstrate the equipment for uh, for that job. But that's neither here nor there for you guys, considering you're software developers, not necessarily uh, sandblasters, except for maybe like one of you, if that. But when it comes to the interview, that was really the last question that was asked of me. So essentially I went in there, we talked about my resume. They asked me quite a few of those regular questions. You know, we kind of just shot the wind. 
had good conversation. That's probably one of my best, uh, not to toot my own horn, but that's probably like one of my best things is people. I like people. Well, I don't like all people, but you know what I mean. Like I am able to get along with people as long as they're willing to get along with me. But as for those two things, we just did uh, some of those other basic interview questions that you need to know, kind of like the one I just gave you an example of. Uh, just look up basic interview questions so you know how to answer those. Not necessarily, not necessarily, but don't make anything up. Make sure everything is completely honest, but you want to be prepared for those particular questions just so you're not thinking on the spot and you don't know how to answer that. And then it just kind of makes you look not as good. Uh, in all honesty, I wasn't even prepared for that question with this answer. I was thinking of how I would answer that question, but talking about past work experience, like regular interviewers would, um, I talked about the vapor based of Sandblaster stuff, and it kind of uh, came to mind how I went up to Canada, and then that story came about to answer that question. I honestly didn't know how I was going to answer that question until the actual interview happened. I'm better on the spot than pre-planned, or planned, I guess, but... I think you need to make sure you have all the basic interview questions underway because that was you know, that's going to be in any interview. And I didn't even have to go through any of those like technical coding interview questions. Although I was prepared, I'm familiar with Java. I studied up on some of those questions because it's not like you're going to know it all up in your head at all times. You need to have a refresher from time to time. But just make sure you cover all the basics. Make sure you cover all the technicals. And for any interviews that you may be in, I think you will be good as long as you know what you're talking about. So that's kind of the uh, little talk about the interview that I owed you guys based on that previous video. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you took something out of it. If you have any more questions, oh, no, I'm not done yet. What was the result of that interview? The result of that interview is uh, I didn't get it. So... I believe this guy because he seems like a very trustworthy guy who was a project manager that I mentioned before. He told me that I was at the top of the list, but I needed secret security clearance today instead of the two months from now because that's how long it would take to get that secret security clearance. They need somebody today. And there was no reason for him to lie. He seems like a straightforward fella. So that's why I say uh, I believe him by him saying you were at the top of our list but it is what it is at this point i'm going to i've been looking into how i can get a secret security clearance for any future mess i may run into like this i don't want to have this happen to me again because a lot of jobs around here is government contracting i need secret security clearance and by that i mean like official secret security clearance because I, I can obtain it i'm not like a felon or anything but I need to actually have like the card, the twit card or whatever the the requirement is. And suppose I need like a government or not a government, but a, a work, a business sponsor that works with the government in order to get me that. It's a whole ordeal, but uh, that was the result of it. I didn't get the job, but it is what it is. I guess it just wasn't meant to be. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Now I can outro. Um, if you like this channel, like this video, be sure to subscribe. If you will like the video, be sure to like it. And until next time, guys, have a good one. Thank mm -hmm. you.